We are Stoke Driving School and here we take a look at the presentation for the Theory Test Booster. So we are Stoke Driving School and thank you for attending our Theory Test Booster. The score for the theory has gone down 16% over the last 10 years and for the Northwest we are pretty much the lowest in the country unfortunately. So just like I pointed out the West Midlands has some of the lowest pass rates Actually, the pass rates over the last 10 years, I believe, has gone down by over 16%. So this was one of the questions that I came out with, first of all, which was a crawler lane. So a crawler lane is a lane on a motorway that has a very drawn out hill. It means that the lorries probably can lose a lot of speed even going down to 20 miles per hour so a crawler lane okay it's very easy if you don't know this one just to jump for something like the hard shoulder but the answer is a steep gradient so hazard perception what are they testing they're testing that you understand what hazards are and that you can react earlier so this will help you in your driving because you become a lot more aware of what's around you there are three types of hazard the one here is what they call a fixed hazard. This is not going to move. This is your junctions, bends, roundabouts, etc. This normally won't score you, but it's fine to click. Next hazard here is anything to do with road conditions or surface or weather. On the picture on the left, under the tree, sometimes in a shadow on a very cold day, water can freeze. This is called a microclimate. Again, this is going to be no points if you click, but this is where the developing hazards happen. Just to on as the um, fixed hazards, if there's nothing there, you can click. You won't lose for it, but this is where the developing hazards can possibly happen. So your moving hazards are the one that can become developing hazards. But for example, if you have a junction on the second picture here with a bus, and a bus is pulling out, this is when they can go wide because of the size of the vehicle. So the fixed hazard becomes a developing hazard. Now I've added on two pictures on two um, videos onto the email and you will see that if you click slightly too early you may score zero so always double click when you know it's the hazard so if you're slightly outside and score zero at least the next one you might score four or three if you try this and it works let us know it is a good technique Now onto this one, so this is not a question that will come up but the information is important. So you're involved in a collision, what documents may the police ask for? There is a thing called a seven day producer, so you do not have to carry around your license and insurance details. But if you do are involved in anything and the police ask to see it, they will give you seven days. So um, they will need to see your vehicle registration, driving license, Nobody wants to see your theory test certificate these days, your insurance certificate, 
MOT certificate, but not the vehicle service. Okay. This was one of the questions that I said that you see you intend to turn left. Now, because a lot of the times in your lessons, driving instructors are naturally going on about mirrors, then it's very easy to read it and think, oh, mirror. But actually, if you look, the right answer would be check out for bicycles because that's the one for the left. This is an important point because we do react in these theory tests and this could be the one point that blows it. This question here, these points here are really valid because they do come up. So name three situations where you may overtake another vehicle on the left. Well, one will be a one-way street. If you look at B, when approaching a motorway slip road where you will be turning off, no, this is a no. We would never do that there. When vehicles in front is signaling to turn right, then this is a definite, because if you think about it, you go slightly near the white line and then it allows a gap for vehicles to get by on the left. <laughs> when a slower vehicle is traveling in a right hand lane of a dual carriageway, this is a big no. And if you remember, I said on the A34 in Newcastle, that can happen. I've seen that happen on test and it's called undertaking. It's a big foul point because vehicles do not expect you to go past on the left if they're just traveling. <laughs> But in slow moving traffic queues, um, i.e. like the A500 or the motorway, when the traffic's just kind of moving a little bit forward, then it is fine to just over undertake on the left. Now put this question in because it's the wording so a cycle lane is marked by a solid white line now we normally know solid white lines that you don't cross which would be the right answer as in a anytime if you didn't have e during its period of operation okay so if it has a period of operation then you can go into it obviously <laughs> So this one, some people are going to know, sometimes you're not. So I would suggest this would be one to highlight and remember it's 120 per minute. So this one here just allows me to go a bit more deeper into motorways. So just a couple of things emergency telephones on motorways are orange they are a mile apart and you have little arrows every hundred yards that point to the nearest one so if you break down in fog and start walking you would only have to walk a hundred yards before you could turn around if the other side the other one was nearer okay um and basically if you look here it's easy for them to find you if you use that. Things have changed these days and you have apps for the um, AA, RAC, etc. that bring them straight to your point. So this one here, a lot of people get confused on this, but if you break it down to what you know on the road, it makes sense. On a red traffic light, you wouldn't want to cross it. Well, red is on the hard shoulder, so we don't want to cross that. Green will be for the slip road, so the red will change to green, which means you can come off or on. In the lanes, that's normally what you have on your roads anyway, which is white, which means as long as it's clear, you can cross. And then the amber, in the highway code means stop on um, traffic lights and again you wouldn't want to cross that for the central reservation so just think if you start from the um, red and go across 
it should make sense. This one I added in because people get confused. When it's just the one line, it means parking restrictions. And if you remember my story, um, when I lived in London, there was a tube station. They didn't want people parking there all day because they would go to work in London. So they would let people park there to go in the shops, but there would be a parking restriction zone at 12 to 12.30. And then they would flood the area with traffic wardens. On this one, it's just that the zone ends. This one's really important. And I think John said something that if you're driving down a street, it's a one way street and there's a road crossing it at the crossroads. This one means there is two way traffic crossing a one way street. This will be one that you know or you don't know. Tires cannot be created equally. And sometimes they try, but they sometimes a few ounces out. So they put weights on the tires. If you don't have the weights, then you will be unbalanced and you will find your steering vibrates at certain speeds. Okay, so you're in collision with a moving vehicle. Someone is injured and your vehicle is damaged. Which four of the following should you find out? Okay, so again, we can break it down here. Whether the driver owns a vehicle, that's a possibility. The other driver's name and address, that's definite. The make and registration of the other vehicle, definitely. The occupation of the other driver, not necessary. The details of the other driver's vehicles, insurance, yep. Whether the other vehicle, vehicle driver is licensed to drive. Now, this won't come up on a theory test, but it's just information that's out there. And hopefully you'll never need it, but it's important information. <laughs> As I said, we don't have trams around there, but areas that are reserved for trams will have the tram lines, like embedded railway lines. There might be a question, who gets affected by tram lines? And this could be cyclists, because they could literally, their wheels are thin, go down the, the tram lines. How you would know is colors, maybe um, different textures on the ground. This is your different textures on the ground. Local um, trams are in Manchester and Wolverhampton actually. Here, these are just um, signs for tram drivers. And again, just take a look and try and remember them. The most important ones I always think are stop. You'll see that sometimes coming up and they're normally on the side of a traffic light. So they're not for us, they're for the tram drivers. So this one I've seen come up a few times, but basically they mean the same thing. So on the one with the red circle means that the other vehicle has priority over us and on the blue one, we have priority over the other vehicle. Okay, SON, you're either gonna know it or not. It stands for statutory off the road notification. If you um, have not taxed your car and you leave it on the road, at some point, as the police have cameras and there's cameras everywhere, you will get pulled up. So even if you leave your car outside your house and not using it, it's possible that somebody reports it. So 
if you want to keep your car on the driveway and not use it sawn statutory off the road notification very simple these days you can do it online don't see these ones come up too much but if you're towing a caravan and it starts to wobble from side to side this can be called snaking then you don't go on the brakes you don't go on the gas you just come off the gas pedal breakaway cable I have seen this come up this is basically if it comes off the tow bar the cable will snap and put the brakes on the caravan so it doesn't carry on rolling down the big hill if you're on a big hill <laughs> I put this one in can you drive in the right hand lane well it's mostly if you're overtaking or turning right okay most of the time you don't over inflate your tires but if you're going in longer journeys then you slightly can just a quick thing about the tires it's the minimum amount of tread is 1.6 and it has to have visible tread all over the tire on the tire they have tread wear indicators that tell you that it's the legal limit it's like a little bar there should be no cuts and bubbles on the tire also, if you do get pulled up for a bull tyre, then you will get three points on your licence. Okay, so hand signals. We don't often use them as someone was saying in the workshop, but if you're turning right, you just stick your hand firmly out the window. Um, it's anti-clockwise for left and for slowing down it's the up and down movement okay so stopping distances like I said there is a calculation so at 20 miles an hour you would double it in feet and that will become 40 at 30 you 2.5 it so that becomes 75 feet so John made a really important point of the thinking distance so the thinking distance is the time it takes for you to say need to stop and your foot to get on the brake all these are here Now stopping distance is okay, but more practical is the two second rule. This works by the vehicle in front going past something stationary and then you counting only a full breaks the two second rule. And if you've reached there before you've said it, then you are too near. In rain, this becomes the four second rule because of spray and because it can take slightly longer to stop. Snow and ice can, if you're lucky, take up to 10 times the amount of distance to stop. Just a quick point here, in thick snow, ABS won't be as effective because ABS turns on and off the brakes so when they're on if it feels the wheels are locking it takes them off for a split second this clears the amount of snow in the front of the car so a question that you sometimes get on ABS is is it effective when is ABS not effective it would be in like um, stones on the road or snow not as effective
This one here is a clear way. So different from the parking restrictions, it's got the X. For example, on the A34 heading to Stone, no stopping. There will be parking places. You can have a urban no stopping, which is basically you can stop to set down passengers, but no parking. All triangles or warnings. The only triangle that is upside down is the give way. This is the reason because you can always recognize a upside down triangle. If it's the other way around, you wouldn't know whether it was sheep or a give way. Same reason for the stop sign. Okay, so from past experience, I've heard some people say, never even heard of chains, no idea. So this could be the one pointer. Chains are for snow. It gives you extra grip. Okay, so just a couple of things here. On the national speed limit, there normally won't be any street lights, but there can be. But on a single carriageway, it is 60. On a dual carriageway, it is 70. And if you're towing a trailer, it will be 10 miles under, so 50 on a single carriageway and 60 on a dual carriageway. If you remember, I said on the roads that have three lanes, so sometimes they have a middle overtaking lane, it, even though it looks like a dual carriageway, it would still be 60 because the main point is it has no central reservation. This is what makes it 70 for a, um, on a dual carriageway or a motorway. This one, traffic lights, the um, what sequence they go in. This is easy to fall down on because we see it every day, but we make, we think we know which way they go, but sometimes we can be wrong. So it will always start on red, which means stop. Then you get red and amber, get ready to go and then green go if it's safe and then back from green to amber which means stop if it's safe to do so and then back to red um a simple way of doing it was if you was very quick on a motorbike and came around the corner and the sequence was amber for both ways you wouldn't know whether it was going to go red or green so but if you saw the red and amber you would know the next is going to be green The only place you get a flashing amber light is on pedestrian crossings. And this means that you can go if it's clear, there's no pedestrians on there. You can kind of compare this to zebra crossings that flash amber on the, on the ball all day long. And again, that means you can go if it's clear. But remember on your lessons, flashing amber means you can go if it's clear. Basically, nothing, no vehicles. This one, no pedestrians. You might see this on a motorway. So remember, the red set round circle is a negative order. Must not, no pedestrians, no vehicles, etc. So triangle signs are a warning. A ford is a river that runs over a road. So after you've been through it, the question might be, what do you need to check? And that would be the brakes. Be very careful if you're driving for a ford in flooded weather 
always look for the gauge that tells you if it's safe to go it will be red if it's not you do not need much free flowing water to take a car away so if you're unsure do not go This is a pedestrian crossing and if you remember I mentioned that sometimes you could be on a country lane and see this normally it's a footpath that goes across the road so in that place is beware for pedestrians also pedestrians on, on roads if they're in a organized walk they will be having a red light behind them so they're very much like a car white light in front and the last person would have a red light This is just a roundabout, warning of a roundabout. Mini roundabout, smaller ones in town can be very small, can easily be missed. Okay, so just to go over these times, we've got the keep left starting from the top. We've got the parking restrictions apply. That'd be grit on the road. That's normally when they chuck down stones um, and that can cause damage. So there'd be a, like a, normally a 20 mile speed limit. This one, I think someone asked about the T-junction. If you look at it, it's a major road that goes around the bend and a minor road joining from the right this time. Okay, so that's a T-junction. This one here is just a, a, like an uneven road, like a big bump in the road. Okay for cars, probably not for lorries. This one really important it is a dual carriageway turning into a single carriageway. Slippery road and this one I've just gone over, pedestrian crossings. These are called fingerboards and they just basically point out to places. You could use them when you're walking on a bike and on a car, just give you the distance. These ones are bigger and they are found on A road and they will tell you towns, major towns. motorways so on motorways these are blue and they will tell you when the next exit is the 25 is the junction number the exit number so you might say i'll, I'll meet you just off the motorway at junction 25. This is a no entry, which will be found at the end of a one way street. No entry means that you can't turn into it. You would see it and say, ah, oh, I can't turn there. This also could be a sign if the junction is on the example right with a no right turn sign. Blue. It's not negative it's now positive so the minimum speed you can do is 30 this normally could be found in a tunnel some motorways this means the 30 minimum 30 is over so back to normal Say what it says, turn left, just go left, keep left. Place you might find this for example is in um, Stoke one way system. The only way you can go left you join in a one way system. You can pass whatever it is either side.
This can be a lifesaver if you're driving in a foreign country or new to this country or there is just lots of like roads to turn into. You just keep left, normally found on a bollard. Found with a school patrol and if you remember the black bit in the middle is like a black pool, they can take the registration number. This is a mandatory sign, if they hold it out, you need to stop. Blue lights, what vehicles have blue lights? Yep, we know police cars, ambulances, fire engines but the ones we might not are bomb disposal coast guard and blood transfusions blood transfusions you can see on motorbikes sometimes everyone got this right green lights doctors Amber lights, mostly road maintenance vehicles or vehicles that are um, picking you up if, if you're being towed. My favourite one, mobility scooters and powered wheelchairs. Um, Top range one level three is limited to eight miles an hour and they can use dual carriageways and they will have a flashing amber light. So one way streets. try to break this down to help someone in the audience so basically on a one-way street you can only go one way which is what a one-way street is when you come to the top of the street if you're going right then nobody will turn in because of the no entry signs at the top which means that you can take up the whole road. You can use both lanes. So you will be in this position to turn right. Okay, this one catches a lot of people out. This is a countdown markers, but not to a motorway exit. They will be blue, not to a, um, A500, they will be black this would be a concealed railway crossing. This I put down as if you are at a crossroads, the yellow and white have no right of way. This will come down to eye contact. There is no right of way here. You can park 10 meters from a junction. This will give visibility to people pulling out and into the junction. Made a mistake, need to turn around. This is not the way. You can never reverse out of a junction. This will be dangerous. Either use a turn in the road maneuver or a roundabout. Driving too near the vehicle in front, refer to the two or four second rule. Flashing your headlights actually just means I exist, I'm here. I remember my story of flashing the young lady in my car and then other vehicles misinterpret that and pull in front of pull in front of me. So it just means I'm here. Always look what the driver is doing. Is he slowing down? Is he letting you go?
this percentage is either known or not but driving smoothly economically can save you Fifteen percent. It can be drivers that are inexperienced and younger. It can be caused by competitive behaviour. Not good on the road. So fog lights, using them on a clear night will, because they are very bright, make your um, brake lights seem less visible. The rules on the fog lights are you shouldn't use them unless visibility is less than 100 meters. because it gives you more visibility. Okay, this one, the rumble strip, someone said it makes you, tells you what your speed is. It just makes you aware of your speed. The faster you are, the noisier the, the the robe will seem. Okay, so you've parked on a hill, you've got your handbrake on, but if it fouls, then you need to Have your wheels facing towards the curb if you're parked downhill so they would jam against the curb and not let the car move. And if your back of the car is pointing down the hill then you would have your tyres this way again it would jam against the curb not allow you to move. Yep, never. If a child got into a car, managed to get it into gear, there could be big problems. Catalytic converters just reduce emissions, reduce and um, cut down the amount of emissions coming from your vehicle. On this one, local authority site, garage, never just in your bin. Anywhere over 30 miles an hour. So you need to warn people by putting on the hazards. So remember the hazards come on when you are a hazard. You can use them on motorways. That is the one difference if the traffic is starting to slow down quickly in front. And then you want to get to contact someone because the tunnel is not a good place to stop. On this one, I think we all know what this means now. So 
anybody on the crossing you can't go but if it's clear you can Turn off your airbags, this is normally done with your key uh, and normally a little switch. This happens, get everybody out of the car, not just yourself. It's basic model um, information about your car, the model, color, engine size. Nothing about the service, nothing about the MOT. 